Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. In a recent experiment, psychologist Shlomo Bresnitz at Hebrew University, Jerusalem, had several groups of Israeli soldiers march 40 kilometers, or about 25 miles, but gave each group different information. He had some groups march 30 kilometers, and then told them they had another 10 to go. He told others they were going to march 60 kilometers, but in reality, only marched them 40. He allowed some to see distance markers, and provided no clue to others as to how far they had walked. At the end of the study, Bresnitz found that the stress hormone levels in the soldiers' blood always reflected their estimates, and not the actual distance they had marched. In other words, their bodies responded not to reality, but to what they were imaging as reality. According to Dr. Charles A. Garfield, a former national aeronautics researcher and current president of the Performance Sciences Institute in Berkeley, California, the Soviets have extensively researched the relationship between imagery and physical performance. In one study, a phalanx of world-class Soviet athletes was divided into four groups. The first group spent 100% of their training time and training. The second spent 75% of their time training and 25% of their time visualizing the exact movements and accomplishments they wanted to achieve in their sport. The third spent 50% of their time training and 50% visualizing. And the fourth spent 25% training and 75% visualizing. Unbelievably, at the 1980 Winter Games in Lake Placid, New York, the fourth group showed the greatest improvement in performance, followed by groups 3, 2, and 1, in that order. Garfield, who has spent hundreds of hours interviewing athletes and sports researchers around the world, says that the Soviets have incorporated sophisticated imagery techniques into many of their athletic programs, and that they believe mental images act as precursors in the process of generating neuromuscular impulses. Garfield believes imagery works because movement is recorded holographically in the brain. In his book, Peak Performance Mental Training Techniques of the World's Greatest Athletes, he states, these images are holographic and function primarily at the subliminal level. The holographic imaging mechanism enables you to quickly solve spatial problems, such as assembling a complex machine, choreographing a dance routine, or running visual images of plays through your mind. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. Australian psychologist Alan Richardson has obtained similar results with basketball players. He took three groups of basketball players and tested their ability to make free throws. Then he instructed the first group to spend 20 minutes a day practicing free throws. He told the second group not to practice and had the third group spend 20 minutes a day visualizing that they were shooting perfect baskets. As might be expected, the group that did nothing showed no improvement. The first group improved 24%, but through the power of imagery alone, the third group improved an astonishing 23%, almost as much as the group that practiced. In the 1950s, university professor Kurt Richter conducted a gruesome experiment with rats to test how long they could tread water. Richter first took a dozen rats, put them into jars half filled with water and watched them drown. The glass jar was very large, therefore the rats couldn't cling to its sides or jump out of it. On average, they'd give up and sink after 15 minutes. Then Richter re-ran the experiment, but with a twist. 
Right before they gave up due to exhaustion, the researchers would pluck them out, dry them off, let them rest for a few minutes, then put them back in for a second round of treading water. In this second try, after they had just swam until failure only a few short minutes earlier, they lasted on average 60 hours. Richter's results showed that removing or saving the rats just before drowning allowed those same rats to swim approximately 240 times longer the next time they were put in the bucket. One rat even lasted an astonishing 81 hours. The conclusion drawn was that since the rats believed that they would eventually be rescued, they could push their bodies way past what they previously thought impossible. This is the same as placebo effect. A new study suggests that, in the right context, some people may experience psychedelic-like effects from placebos alone. The researchers reported some of the strongest placebo effects on consciousness in the literature relating to psychedelic drugs. Indeed, 61% of the participants in the experiment reported some effect after consuming the placebo. The world is generated by our thoughts and the thoughts of God. Deep within you lies a fragment of God's consciousness, the very same consciousness that birthed the cosmos. Should you possess the strength of character, you hold the power to will anything into being. Through the might of belief, the tangible takes form. Once this dominion is harnessed, your indomitability knows no bounds. The significance of supplication shall unfurl before you, clear as day. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, Go, throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Mark 11, verse 22 to 24. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.